right, everyone. Thanks so much for coming back to She Plays the Podcast. I'm super excited to be joined today by Haley Carter. She plays on the WTA Tour, Women's Tennis Association. Thanks so much, Haley, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited. So excited to chat with you. And I know we've been uh, messaging back and forth for a little bit. You had a pretty exciting summer uh, despite COVID. Can you tell us a little bit about what's been going on in your world? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we had the break on tour for a bit, as did pretty much every sport. Uh, But we got started back in in maybe around July. And honestly, for me, it kind of took off from there. Uh, I think, you know, I had played some of my best tennis, we had some of our best results. And we won a WT title, we quarterfinaled the US Open, we made round of 16 of the French and reach career high rankings for both of us. So it's super cool, super special, and, you know, looking forward to a new year and hopefully a full year and with uh, some fans in the stands. Absolutely. And I'm curious, what was it like traveling abroad during COVID? <laughs> yeah, tricky. I had a big mass of paperwork, that's for sure. Um, the WTA made it as easy as possible. Obviously, they got kind of everything sorted for us, but I mean, every like customs little thing we were interrogated for sure and when we got to the the events we had to stay hotel to the site back to the hotel back to the site so completely in a bubble um really didn't see anyone outside of you know the tennis players coaches uh wta staff so it was uh very kind of like the nba bubble i imagine except you're just relocating every week (laughs) right true 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 well and i'm curious what is that indifference to on a normal like how much are you able to go out when you're you know in a new city on a tournament in non-covid times yeah i mean honestly i don't go out that much but it's when you can't go out at all that you feel like you're just like trapped (laughs) um but uh you know we we try to say the tournaments actually do a good job of to taking us to sites so like Hobart took us to, um, I think it was called Bonnaroo or something. It was a kangaroo um, little facility. And then basically every tournament has has some activity and some little thing that helps remind you that you love the country and you want to come back and all of that. And and unfortunately, this time we were in the hotel, but we were so lucky to be playing with with everything going on. I mean, you know, tennis is is the least of concerns. And to be able to be on the court was, uh, was just very very lucky very fortunate and we were happy to be playing yeah I mean I bet just as an athlete you were just like get me out there as soon as I can it's just I'm sure there was lots of withdrawal there yeah absolutely get me out there and then it was such an adjustment getting back in terms of like travel honestly I've never been in one place for that long since I was a little kid since I started maybe when I was like I think I started tournaments when I was around eight years old and since then, I feel like I'm go, 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 go. And for the first time, I was in one place. I was like, what does one do with all of this time? <laughs> what Did you pick up any hobbies? They... Uh, I, became, I started a book club. I became a big reader. Um, I've been doing grad school, so, so that took up a bit of time. Um, and then big hiker nowadays. So, uh, yeah, it works out that I live in Tennessee and there's mountains and all of that. But uh, I find myself like hiking maybe every other day honestly of quarantine kind of times obviously from a nice safe distance but uh I enjoyed getting in the outdoors and you know doing that because I just never get the time to yeah that's awesome I'm so happy that you've gotten to have that time and I do think there's something just so nice about whether it's COVID thoughts or whatever else is going on in the world just getting outside and like not having a phone to look at. It's just so good for mental health. So that's really awesome. Oh, absolutely. I'm team anti-phone. I go on uh, my doubles partner and my coach hates it because sometimes I go like three, four or five days without even using my phone. It's uh, I'm, I'm a little bit bizarre in that <laughs> standpoint of, of a normal 25 year old. I go like a good three, four days without it. It's, pretty much like I feel like every other week I'll go on a we call it a phone detox (laughs) there you go there you go yeah it's necessary more of us should do that um so yeah so you said that you started when you were eight to start traveling so I'd love to hear just a little bit of how you got into it and then you played at Chapel Hill right you're Tar Heel yes yeah Tar Heel so um I started officially playing the sport when I was six I completely like fumbled into it um I feel like tennis is one where a lot of times parents play or, you know, it's more of a family kind of thing. But mine, I just, we had courts in the neighborhood. Um, so we got 
some rackets at Walmart one time and like I was kind of good from the start my brothers were six years older than me and I could beat them right away from when I was a little six-year-old kid so I was like okay I like this for that reason <laughs> and then from there camps and all that and then I eventually moved to Hilton Head Island to, to train at Sister Tennis Academy and yeah I think it the kind of the vision was honestly always to play professionally from, from when I was a young kid and then when I was 16, I rolled my ankle really badly. Um, I think I was doing great at 16. I was kind of progressing up a bit in the pro ranks. I was already like made a finals of the singles in, in a pro event. And then I rolled my ankle and I was out for four months. And that was kind of the wake up call where I was like, okay, I should get a college education and I should get a degree um, and have a backup. And best decision I ever made my four years at Carolina were absolutely perfect. Um, I you know, so close with my coach still. I spent vacation with him the other week uh, with his family. So uh, amazing stepping stone to, to play professionally and so happy I did that. That's awesome. What does it feel like? Do you, do you stop often and r realize like, oh, my dream as a little kid, it's come true. Do you, how does that feel? I, <laughs> I honestly have this year. This is the first year I've done it. I'm getting super sentimental with age. <laughs> And I, I'm starting to reflect. I think for me, the Grand Slams is, is really, I played, um, I mean, there was no Wimbledon this year, so I technically played all the Grand Slams, and we made the round of 16 of all of them. And for me, it was like dreaming of playing the Grand Slams growing up. You know, it's just like this fantasy kind of you have in your head. And I think not only playing them, but also, you know, showing we had chances to go far in them was so special to me it was it was just kind of a really cool wake-up call like not only am I here like I belong here which mm -hmm. I think took took a year or two on tour for me to really feel that no matter results in college no matter what people may think I can do honestly it's that self-belief and like finally I think it clicked for me um you know if I'm playing well if I'm playing poorly if I'm high in confidence low in confidence regardless like I feel like I belong here now and that's that's the switch flip that made us I think more successful this year that's awesome. Very cool. Just that self, yeah, confidence, especially in a sport like tennis. I feel like sometimes, yeah, that's all you have to go on. If it's, you know, just, oh, they're not, the balls aren't landing in the right space or whatever, you know, it's, I think that's awesome. What, I'm curious what Grand Slam moment really stood out to you this year? Was it a, pl a certain place that you were just like, ah, oh, the reverence of this place or anything in particular? Yeah. I think um, I'm going to give you a two-part answer. I think for me, Australian Open, because it was our first one where we, we beat the nine seeds in the first round. And it was just like, whoa, you know, I, I have no idea that that was even possible type of thing. They're, they're so great. They were the French Open finalists the year before. And we beat them in the first round. And that was the first kind of like, oh, okay, we can do this. And, and we lost a tight one in the round of 16 uh, to a really good team. And then I think flash forward to the U.S. Open where we were seated for the first time. And I think that was unreal. And like being seated and defending our seed. And then we actually took it one step further and beat an amazing team to make it to the quarterfinals. I think um, for me, U.S. Open, I've played a few times like juniors. And then there's a collegiate tournament there. And then I played as a wild card last year. And for me, that site is so stressful I get <laughs> so because that's the one when you're a kid is in the U.S. you think about you know yeah. so for me it automatically registers every stress ball in my head and to, to be successful there was particularly special um so yeah I, I we have like the WTA sports psychologist on the road that kind of travels and I was like U.S. Open two times a week maybe honestly more than two times a week at the U.S. Open I was like okay let's chat <laughs> um and it was super helpful and put me in the right mental space and um yeah it was it was awesome I love that I love that that's also something that probably is in every league we just don't talk about that much but that that's available as a resource and gosh yeah because I can't imagine the stress that comes with all of the yeah the pressure of not even having fans really this year that I'm sure adds to stress I don't know do you feel like you get in the zone or, or can you really hear the crowd does it influence you at all yeah, um, I, I honestly, I think I get relatively in the zone. I think for me, um, a lot of it's self-induced pressure, I think. And um, 
honestly, it's, it's certain people, like I get nervous. It's kind of weird. I get nervous when, when certain people watch me that, that matter to me and that I, I want to do well for. So it could be a stand of 20,000 people or stands of the same four people that make me nervous. And like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be equally nervous. They could be the only four in the stands and it will, it will be just as stressful as 20,000. So I think, uh, for me, that's something I'm, I'm working, you know, through. And, you know, I had a, interestingly enough for having good results, I had a bit of a tough year with, with some parts of my game that I, I really struggled with for the first time um, in my career. So I uh, am super proud to like have come out with it with, with good results and with like a positive outlook and mentality going into the new year. That's awesome. Well, yeah, so you have, won and qualified and gotten far um with someone else on your team louisa is that how you say her name louisa yes stefani correct louisa stefani amazing so i'm so curious about this how do you find a partner is there like match dating type stuff of like ooh, do we work well <laughs> together like how does that happen and then you guys have played together for two years at least now right yeah pushing pushing on two years now it's kind of been one full year we started last year in october so okay. kind of uh we counted as one year with covid and all of that but uh yeah it's it's interesting um i i knew her from college and then i played tournaments against her uh in the pros and while i was playing against her i was like wow she's so tough like i can't get the ball by her and then i kind of started to think like oh, what if I was next to her, you know, <laughs> and, and that's kind of how it started uh, forming in my mind, and I actually asked her to play for, for this swing in Asia, and our first tournament together, the very first match, we beat the number one seeds, Ostapenko and Flipkins, two, two very good players, and we made the finals there, and then won the very next event, and then semifinals the next event, and so for us, it was a bit easier, because we were like, oh, well, this works, uh, sometimes it's tricky, Sometimes you don't have the success right away. Sometimes you don't know. Uh, for, for Lou and I, it was easy because we're really good friends off the court. We're, you know, good friends on the court. We enjoy playing together. She picks me up when I'm down. I like to hope I pick her up <laughs> when she's down. Um, and it, it's been smooth sailing. I've been crazy lucky with it. I've had really two partners for my whole time on tour and very consistent where a lot of girls have to find them week in week out and kind of mix and match and all of that and that's where it gets tricky so you'll notice really in in women's doubles the the people that are you know top 30 40 in the world they're pretty consistent with their pairings it's the people that split that are a little uh have a bit of a hard time getting that rhythm yeah it makes sense because the rhythm is yeah like i can expect her to go here and i can you know you can learn yeah. each other's game so that's that's really cool and i mean this is just from a you know someone who's just unaware do, does everyone on the tour do singles and doubles or do some people like just want to focus on singles others just want to do doubles yeah I think um a little of everything so I think um really a lot of people do both I would say primarily most people do both um I think their top top singles people only do singles because it just makes the most sense for them. They want to focus all their effort and energy there and might not like doubles as much, but they'll play sometimes here and there. And then for me, I pr play primarily doubles. Um, and there are some girls on tour that play primarily doubles. And I would say sometimes that's due to just like where their skills are at the net or whatever the case may be. But I think a lot of times it's due to, to health reasons. They've, they've gotten injuries. Um, they've been unlucky with a few things or they were previously top in singles and now they're just kind of like reaching the end of their career and focusing a bit more on the double side. So, so it's, it's a mixture of things, but I would say a, a lot of it is, is due to, um, you know, where you, where you enjoy it the most, honestly, where, <laughs> because it is, it's a tough sport. It's you're traveling week in, week out and you want to, you want to have fun on the court. So I think that's a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, I've been amazed at watching the calendar and like trying to, we were running some fantasy games for the, for the tour for a couple of um, events this summer and just seeing the calendar and what it was supposed to be. It was just like, oh my gosh, yeah. they really are just all over the place. I know they're all over the place and it's constant every week. I think that's something 
I luckily I had, you know, I hate to say luckily I had, but COVID slowed me down because I am someone who plays every week, like, because I, I had never gotten into these tournaments before. So when you're first getting into them, you're so excited to be in and you're like, I can't skip this. I've wanted to play this forever, you know, like, and, and it's really about managing your schedule. So earlier this year, I, I got hurt. I um, had a stress fracture in my hip and like a torn labrum, everything. And I was still playing every week to start and I honestly I would have been crazy and probably played the whole year like trying to manage and get week by week uh but uh COVID shut me down and and I was able to get uh, reasonably healthy getting back and that's something I'm really going to focus on in 2021 is being smart about you know you know three weeks on one week off give my body a break rather than playing everything that I can get into (laughs) yeah oh yeah gosh I can't imagine that's incredible to think about going through that kind of pain um but yes I'm kind of I was gonna say I had a a 15-hour flight from Doha back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. with a fractured hip in the middle seat I was the last person that got because I bought a ticket for the next day it was the most miserable flight experience of my life (laughs) oh gosh I cannot imagine yeah (laughs) oh my gosh and yeah middle seat you're just like I see a pillow oh man man I know it was tough (laughs) well I'm glad it sounds like you're you're healing so that's good um I'm curious too as far as like when you're in a tournament because sometimes you or a lot of times you play one day and you're playing the next day or sometimes it's spaced out, but what does that turnaround like as far as, okay, here's our next opponent. What are we studying? What are we looking at to get ready for the next match? Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it depends kind of on the, on the schedule and how many days you have. Um, when it's back to back, it's obviously pretty quick. I I've stopped looking at the draw. I've become a bit weird with that because I, I find my head looking too far ahead. Um, so I like to take it one match at a time. And the only way I can do that is to not look <laughs> and have my coach tell me who I'm playing that next match. But I do like to know in enough time to prepare. So as soon as I finish one match, I, I know my opponent for the next match. And I'm a big video geek. Um, you know, anyone on tour will tell you. A, a lot of people, honestly, on tour will message me and ask me about their own opponents because I am, I'm, that's probably my number one skill is my ability to read opponents and know their tendencies and know what they do well and what they don't like. And so I watch a ton of film. I look at scores. I look at all of that. So I'm kind of that person. And uh, Lou is really just like the fire on the team. She's the the good energy. She's the, um, you know, amazing play. She does honestly everything so well. And, and I like to bring in just a bit of strategy with it. So we prepare kind of either the day before, obviously, if it's next match, or if we have a couple of days of practice, we'll prepare specifically for that team. So you know teams pretty well at this point. You know which teams are going to lob, which teams are going to hit hard, which are going to come to the net. And we practice uh, that specifically for a couple of days. Very cool. So what do you think your team is known for? Oh, uh, I, I know this one. Our team is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, unconventional is the word I would use to describe us. So we uh, slice, we come in, we chip lob, we do everything to make you uncomfortable. We're not going to be someone who is going to stay back and just hit a beautiful ball. I'm going to, you know, hit some goofy shot and I'm going to charge and I'm going to make you uncomfortable. So I think that's what we're known for um, primarily. I think we're one of the few teams at every single point we're both looking to get into the net every time very cool and unpredictable so how do you even you know plan for that that's awesome yeah exactly that's what see i just need you to give me that confidence over and over there you go there you go yeah. <laughs> keep you boosting repeat. me up yeah. <laughs> yeah well and i love too that um i didn't know that um you were a Tar Heel. so i grew up a t- huge Tar Heel fan i'm from winston-salem so you know just down the road is the rivalry Carolina and Duke as intense in tennis or like who are the big, you know, what's it like? I want to say yes, but I don't know if it is because we, okay. we're so, we're so close um, in proximity that we end up being good friends. I okay. feel like, yeah, cause we know each other from juniors and all that, but on the court from, from a level standpoint, Duke UNC is unreal. I mean, they're both consistently top 10 in tennis. They go back and forth. Um, I would maybe like to brag that UNC's had a bit of a better run as of late. Um, so we're, we're doing well right now in, in terms of ACC and nationally. And yeah, it's a big battle. I think um, UNC UVA is also one in tennis, especially the, the UVA coaches uh, were both Tar Heels. So a little oh, yeah. kind of 
yeah, internal rivalry there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's always fun. I think uh, tennis, it's, it's interesting because we grew up all so in our worlds. And like, you know, if, if you were a top tennis player going to a top uh, school, you were friends with the other top players. I feel like other sports, there's so many other people you're with. You're with your high school, you know, students. You're with, it, with maybe like walk-on players on teams and all that. But like when you're a top junior, you're only in that top junior bubble. And so we know everyone and uh, we're all good friends for the most part. That's cool. Do you feel like that translates to the pro realm as well? I do in a bit of a different capacity of there's so there's like USA juniors, USTA is what we call it. And then there's ITF, which is the International Tennis Federation. So I personally, I didn't play ITF juniors growing up. So like the junior US Opens, the junior Australian Opens, all those things that honestly, a lot of the top professionals have played um and they're all kind of friends from that and I came in and I'm like okay I don't know anyone because I never played these um so I relied a lot on my college friendships that you know the like college girls that were in the pros but otherwise uh, I felt a bit like a little loser loner out there for a bit of the <laughs> for a bit of the start of the tour but then they welcomed me with open arms and now I'm smooth sailing <laughs> and now they call you for tips and tricks so that's good yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> awesome well, cool. So what, what are your hopes for next year? Or are you, you know, I don't know what they're saying league wise. I'm sure it's still up in the air with COVID, but what are you looking forward to? And then where can people find you online to connect? Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to, well, first I'm looking forward to knowing what we're playing. <laughs> we're, like you said, it's still up in the air. Uh, obviously we started here in um, Australia for, for the Aussie open, but we're still even waiting on some details on that. Um, but yeah, I think for the new year, for me, um, I, I struggled a lot this year with, with health stuff. So I think for me, really, this off season is about getting healthy. And I would love, love, love to be healthy for the new year. And from there, results can follow however they want to follow. Um, so for me, it's just a priority on, you know, health, injury wise, health from medical wise, and then health from the mentality wise, and, you know, having fun on the court, and then hopefully we can make some runs, and I would love to break into the top 20 or something like that, or make the WTA finals would be unreal, so I have some some goals, and and we'll see, Um, but yeah, uh, definitely you can follow along, obviously, all the stuff on the WTA website, the WTA Instagram, uh, doubles, push for some doubles coverage and content. We always love to see fans pushing for that. So uh, make sure you do that. And then you can check us out. We're all, both Louise and I are on Instagram. Uh, we have personal Instagrams and we try to keep them up pretty regularly. So you can stay tuned for some fun behind the scenes content. Yeah, we will put those links in the show notes. And I will say that we, we personally uh, tweeted out to ESPN a couple times this summer of, hey, we'd love some uh, details on the next double, doubles match. Like, where are we at? Where are the scores? So there I'm with go. you there. That's what we want. We want more. So everyone listening to this podcast, keep tweeting away because the more you tweet, the more it shows. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We, we did our best to, to keep up with it. That's something that we are definitely cognizant of moving forward that we want to give that representation. So thank you again so much for joining me today. And we wish you speedy recovery a full recovery and are looking forward to 2021 awesome thanks so much i appreciate it